Hi, this is Shelly. Uh, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to show you how to make some patches on your Janome 9850. I'm going to provide a couple of um, digital downloads that you can use as an outline uh, to develop your, your patch on. And then as far as the embroidery design goes, um, I'm going to show you how to use just the regular um, designs that come installed on your machine just to play around with it and see what you can do. I want to show you an example of one of the patches that I made on the machine. This was designed by my daughter in honor of my uncle who says okay okay a lot um, and she um, designed it, sent it over and I turned it into a, a, a digital embroidery file and experimented with all kinds of stabilizers because I really wanted to get that marrowed edge the way that um, patches usually have. And it, it just sort of inspired me because um, I love a denim jacket and it seems so big of a commitment to make to actually put embroidery on it. But I love the idea of a patch because it's not uh, permanently part of the garment unless you want it to be. Um, and a lot of people are using patches to, um, you know, say fun things or, you know, show their flair. Um, so anyway, I'll get started. I'm gonna provide you with two files and they are um, basically going to just stitch out a guide and then you will put your uh, base fabric down and uh, it'll stitch it out on your stabilizer. And then you put your base fabric down and then uh, you will stitch your design onto the fabric. Um, and then uh, one of the other files will give you that, that uh, satin uh, edge all around that edge of your patch. So, um, first of all, download the files that I'm providing. Um, I have a video uh, that you can reference if you don't know how to download and use a, a, a file from the internet. Um, that's a whole other process, and so assuming that you know how to do that, um, if you don't, go watch it, come back to this point, and then you're gonna open uh, your files on your on your flash drive here. And you'll see that I am providing you with uh, this stitch border. And then I'm gonna lay down my fabric and then I'm gonna stitch it again. So I'm not gonna do anything else at this point, but just start stitching. So I have my machine threaded with, you know, the color of thread I don't guess really matters. Um, so this is really just a guideline to let me know where I should put So now it's telling me to uh, raise my presser foot and I'm going to put down a piece of this fabric. Now I could use some fabric glue stick if I'm concerned about this uh, getting wonky. Um, honestly, I, I think I will, hold on. Yeah, my fabric was a little curly, so I just put a little bit of this fabric glue stick. I love this. Um, and it, it secured it pretty well. And this is just to keep it down until I'm gonna do another stitch to tack that down. And I also added a little magnet here. I don't think this is gonna move around that much, but I'm gonna give myself a little tail here. Okay, and doing this one-handed, interesting. And I'm going to do it the same thing again. And this is going to tack it 
half down the fabric. I cut that one kind of close. <laughs> but having the handy lines on me is, is kind of a nice thing. And um, the color of the the file, and the reason why I put it in two separate files is so that you can decide in what order you want it to stitch out. And um, also, I made them different colors so that the machine would stop and give you a chance to change thread. Um, and um, also, you know, change steps. Okay, so it's tacked down uh, the fabric. And now I am going to trim around as closely as possible. And I'm going to be careful, as careful as possible, to not um, move this around inside the hoop. So, um, yep, I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna use my little scissors here. and trim around. Okay, so you can see I trimmed as closely as I could. If I had some of those duckbill scissors, I bet you I could do a better job. Yes, you will notice I am using paper towel. I don't know if that is a no-no, but I, in a pinch, I've been, I've been using that. So hopefully I'm not showing you to do something that's catastrophic. I'll let you know. Okay, so I have loaded my design um, on my machine and I'm going to start with this yellow one which is um, the guide stitch. I have some water soluble stabilizer hooped um, in the uh, 14 Q, I think it's 14 start by stitching out. Oh, that's not a good sign. Okay, that was just um, an issue where this part, this take up lever wasn't threaded properly. So um, I went ahead and stitched down this first circle. That's the guide that tells me where I need to place my fabric. And I have a piece of fabric here. Let's see if this will fit. Yep, it fits. I am going to um, tack this down with a little bit of this fabric glue stick just to keep it in place while I stitch out the next um, circle, which is going to tack it uh, to the stabilizer. I'm also gonna place a little magnet here just to kind of keep it in place as we come around. And I've got my hand on here, but it's ever so gently. I don't want to bump it out of alignment. See that, what I did? It's trying to be too skimpy. And I ran off the road. I think that's gonna be okay because I'm gonna end up covering this with the with the um, the satin edge, which um, should be enclosed. Okay, so now I'm going to start stitching out the letters and the graphic here on my design, and it is um, I'm not gonna follow the colors here. I've kind of change my colors up a little bit so uh, but this part here looks like it is the inside of the drink so I'm going to come up with something for that Thank you. 
to finish this second, and then I'm going to do another one, just to make sure that it's all covered. So just as an example, um, you notice here, it didn't stitch very nicely, and that is because I cut too close to the stitching, I actually cut through the tack down stitching, and so the fabric is Braid and the um, outside satin stitching is kind of missing to the fabric. This one, you'll notice this little, uh, this little fuzzy fabric uh, sticking up here. This is an example of me not cutting close enough to that initial uh, tack down stitch. So, guess what I'm going to do? I am going to make this, the green circle, ever so slightly smaller, and then make another run. Okay, here we go. I'm done with the stitching. I'm just going to trim up some of these jump threads and do a little trimming, uh, and then I'll show you the final. I haven't trimmed this up yet, but I wanted to show, see these little things that are sticking up? There's just a few of them. I'm gonna trim those off. I'm not gonna worry about them too much. But that's what I really try to avoid. I really need to get some applique scissors. I think those would really come in handy for this. I'm gonna just trim this here. Ever so carefully. I'm gonna pull it and then I don't wanna risk cutting into the border. It also depends on how close you size the tack down stitch from the outside border. I think next time I might give myself a little extra space here. Um, and you can always add a little bit of um, fray check to some of these if you don't want them coming. I think my scissors are about I don't even cut butter now. So this is the uh, water soluble. I don't even bother getting it wet. I just pull it off. It, it comes off easy. And also I would um, suggest saving all the little bits because I was reading on the box that I got this uh, stabilizer in that you can actually um, dissolve it in a little water and then you can use it as a fabric stiffener. Um. So here I am, I'm, I have my little free arm hoop. I'm getting ready to try a couple of little badge size uh, patches. I pre-cut these using my Cricut, uh, trying to get them precisely cut. And if you have a Cricut, I generally put some contact pa paper down when I'm working with felt because it's kind of fuzzy and I don't want it to mess up my mat. Anyway, so I have my design loaded up. It's one of the standard, uh, the stock lip design that's on the machine. And oh, it looks like I have a thread break. And this, uh, this experiment is is turning out to not work very well. And it's not because of the machine. Um, it is because I cut that too small. The little circles were too small and they didn't get tacked down and it was a mess. This experiment is on felt. I'm doing some boots and badges on felt. And I'm using terrible stabilizer and uh, stitching those down and then afterwards you just tear it off and, and trim them out. And you can see here on this one I'm actually using a little bit of paper towel. So hopefully that's not a no-no, I just use it in a pinch. So here I have a piece of heat and bond, fusible web. It's um, 
sticky uh, nubby on one side and then after you iron it on when you get ready to iron it on your other item um, you peel off the paper and then you iron it on so I am going to add this to the back of this I'm not using steam and I'm being kind of careful um, because the I don't want to melt my embroidery thread. I'm actually going to use a piece of parchment here just for a little extra barrier. Okay, so I'm trying this. Um, it's a lot more stiff now that I've pressed it. So I'm going to experiment with applying the heat and bond before I stitch down my design. So. I will apply it to my foundation fabric and then tack it down using the um, running stitch circle and then go ahead and stitch out my design. I'm going to see, uh, I think what I'm going to do is only do the heat and bond up to here because I really don't want to interfere with the satin stitches really enclosing. Um, the edge of the patch. So here I am. I have heat and bond on one side. Oops. I cut this circle out um, on my Cricut. So, and it fits just perfectly on the inside here. And I'm hoping that it will be the right size. So I'm going to iron this on uh, to my tearaway stabilizer. Just like that. Okay, so I've hooped it back and now I'm going, oops, I'm going to try see how this uh, pleased with the way this one turned out. Um, I did not use the water soluble. This one I just used <clears throat> the tear away and it seemed to be a lot more mm, less rumply. Oh guess what I noticed. See that fray? Brrr. That is no bueno. It's this material it frays a lot. This is what the back looks like. I do have some trimming. I, it does have the tear away on here still. Underneath that is the um, iron on. So this might be hard to tear away. This might just be how it is. Okay, still learning. I think think what I'm going to do is make the satin stitch wider because I think it might be too narrow and it's not covering the edges enough. So that's what I'm going to do. So in conclusion, I would say I like to use felt as a foundation. It doesn't fray. I don't have to worry about that. The twill is great. You just have to take extra care to not cut too close to the tack down or guide stitches um, because uh, the twill has a tendency to fray very easily. So um, either cut it generously or use fray check or something like that. Um, I am providing three different sizes 
um, for you to try, and there'll be three files per size. One is for the border, one is for the guide, and one is for the tack down stitch. Um, add those to your design on your machine in the order that you want them to stitch out. And then uh, happy embroidering, and let me know in the comments uh, what you think.